بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله first of all I would like to thank all the volunteers who've done such an incredible job United for Change there's not a single salaried employee this conference is solely the work of the volunteers uh, led ably by Tariq Subhani and uh, Ahmed Abu Hamda and many others, uh, Ahmadu, the moderator of the year himself. So we like to thank them. All of you have come out from primarily the tri-state, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey area, and also from, from environs far uh, beyond Boston, Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, Philadelphia, other places. May Allah Ta'ala reward you for your support of this program uh, that helped Masjid al-Islam to raise significant amount of money this evening in a very short period of time. All of the scholars who've sacrificed from their very, very busy schedules, uh, Dr. Quick traveling internationally from Canada, Sheikh Hamza traveling internationally from California. <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh Adhemi and uh, Nina Weed, uh, uh, Yasser Qadi, and many, many others who are visionaries in their respective communities. Of course, these sisters, uh, Yasmin Mujahid, who some of you, many of you might not have known about, and I'm sure now you'll be following her uh, all over, wherever she might be lecturing. She's still selling, selling her books uh, outside. Uh, we had an introduction to Afia Siddiqui, who's languishing in a prison in Texas. Uh, Maurice Salakan has her, a book that outlines her case and the egregious uh, transgressions of justice that occurred in that case. So please don't let him leave with any books. Uh, also, there's a housekeeping note. Don't leave any trash in here. We want to leave this hall cleaner than we found it. So as you leave after Sheikh Hamza's speech and then the closing dua, the closing prayer, uh, grab any plastic bottles, cups, uh, paper that you might see on the floor and uh, bring it out and put it in the garbage cans outside of the hall, please. And if you happen to go into the bathroom, you can help wipe up the lakes and puddles that have accumulated inevitably when you get a lot of Muslims together in a public place. May Allah Ta'ala bless all of you and reward you abundantly. And in 10 or 15 minutes, I don't propose to outline a movement, but I want to talk about some of the things that are absolutely essential if we're going to begin to push back in an organized and mass fashion against many of the uh, outrages that Chris Hedges so articulately and penetratingly uh, outlined for us in, in his uh, remarks. And I want to do this in the context of a single verse in the Qur'an where Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مَنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا وَمَنْ يُوقَ صُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ المفلحون. So Allah Ta'ala mentions in this verse, those who inhabited the abode uh, before them, they love those referring to the Ansar, they love those referring to the Muhajireen, the migrants who might, the helpers, the Ansar, loving the Muhajireen who migrated to them. And they find in their, in their soul uh, no need or agitation concerning what they've been given. And they give preference to others even though they themselves have dire need and whoever can avoid the stinginess in their soul, then they are those who will be successful. So th this verse, I think it outlined the foundation, one of the foundations for the success of that early community. And I think it gives us tremendous insight into what we need to be successful in our day and time, in the very trying and challenging circumstances that we find ourselves in. So first of all, 
the verse talks about, not first of all, but it talks about love and the importance of love. So the ability of the muhajireen, or the ansar ready, rather, to take in with open arms their brothers and sisters who were forced by trying circumstances to flee Mecca was based in large part on the fact that they had open hearts. If we don't have open hearts, we'll never have open arms. It's as simple as that. So as a community, first and foremost, if we're going to be a community that begins to challenge and to push back against and to help people who are, who are suffering as a result of the circumstances we find our nation in, then we're going to have to be a community of love because those people who are pushing for the draconian policies that we've been uh, listening to, they are people of hate. They are people whose hearts are filled with hate. And this morning, Imam Siraj was talking about the temptations and Aretha Franklin, so I'm going to do my throwback to the 60s. War is not the answer, for only love can conquer hate. So if we are people in a community of love, we will conquer their hate. We will conquer their hate. And we will be able to give solace to those who are living in places like Camden, New Jersey, or microcosms of Camden, New Jersey, all over this country. And they find in their heart no need, and they're not agitated by what they've been given. One of the reasons we find the kind of policies that we find domestically, the economic policies, is because those people who have wealth, because they don't have love, for those who lack wealth, they find agitation and a need for what others might be given. They find a need for that paltry welfare check. And it strikes close to home. This isn't some abstraction. We have a group of five Somali brothers with us who've traveled here from Lewiston, Maine. Are you brothers still here? Stand up so the people can see you. These bright lights, Born in my eyes, maybe I could see you. You got you brothers here? Where are they at? I don't see you. Anyway, you guys see them. Now I mentioned them to say this. They're trying to save their masjid. Their masjid, they've come across a property. They come a across a property that costs two hundred forty-six thousand dollars. But the owner has agreed for them to pay it off to the tune of $1,600 a month. Formally, because they're refugees and they're in an area that's already economically depressed, they were getting assistance, public assistance, and from those paltry welfare checks, they were putting their money together to pay that $1,600. Now those checks have stopped, they're only getting food stamps. And we know if the food stamp president is defeated in the next election, and this isn't an ad for Barack Obama, they won't probably even be getting food stamps. They cannot pay that $1,600 says they've come here to appeal for help from the brothers and sisters here. So, those people, they find a need for the welfare check. They find a need for the WIC check. They find a need for the money paying food stamps, the millions of dollars. But they find no need for the billions or trillions that are going for the wars. They, can, they find no need to take that money away. 
because their corporations and their narrow interests are the ones that benefit from that. We should be the ones who say, no, we're going to take your corporate, your welfare away. They're against socialism until the socialism benefits them, until the government spending benefits them, until the tax dollars are going in their direction. They're trying to take your hard-earned Social Security and call it an entitlement. They're trying to take your Medicare and call it an entitlement as if it's a privilege that public largesse is extending to you. Social Security was the money taken out of your paycheck to pay for your future. And we have to stand up and say, my money is not going to Wall Street so they can gamble it away like they gambled away the equity in my home, like they gambled away my retirement account, like they gambled away my pension fund. We have to stand up, brothers and sisters, and say, no. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا But to do that, we have to create a new public morality. The public morality of selfishness. It has to go. The intellectual foundations of that selfishness, the likes of the Ayn Rand novels that glorify selfishness, that glorify a lack of public and social concern, that demonize social justice, it has to be countered by a movement and by a morality that glorifies selflessness, that glorifies social justice, that glorifies a compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. Allah Ta'ala says, well, They give preference to others even though they themselves have dire needs, have severe needs. In other words, they were poor, but they were willing to help those who were poorer than themselves. I want to read something to you from something Chris Hedridge wrote. It's in your book. There are a lot of good articles in this book. You should read them. <laughs> he says in City and Ruins, despite Camden's bleakness, despite its crime and its deprivation, despite its lost factory jobs that are never coming back, despite all of this, valiant souls somehow rise up in magnificent defiance. In a room across the street from Sacred Heart Catholic Church, where meals are provided for the homeless on Saturdays, a group of African-American women bow their heads over a table and hold hands. They're led by Lois Davis, 67, a heavyset woman who radiates an indomitable, unbroken spirit. The poor have to help the poor, Davis said, because the ones who make the money are helping the people with money. Why do I quote this? 1,400 years before Lois Davis said it, Allah Ta'ala said it in the Quran. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا They give preference to others even though they themselves are poor. They're saying, I'm poor, but you're poorer than I am, so I can find a way to help feed you, to help clothe you, to help you maintain your dignity in the face of the dehumanizing conditions we find before ourselves. That is our responsibility. That is our mission. That is our job of a community. And if you leave here with nothing else this evening, leave here with that idea imprinted in your heart, brothers and sisters, this is the foundation of the movement that we have to build. And then Allah Ta'ala tells us, He says, he knows that there are, four, there are qualities in us that push us towards stinginess. 
شح extreme stinginess but to avoid it we need to do some work on ourselves early this morning a question was asked by Imam Siraj Wahaj how many of you came here to work on yourself and this is where a change starts in our world view it doesn't start on high it starts in our hearts because this is where the saga of Islam started it started in the heart of Adam alayhi salam when that ruh was breathed into Adam that creature of Allah that mysterious force that we've been given no knowledge of فَثُمَّ سَوَّاهُ وَنَفَخَ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِهِ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبَصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ That he made him upright, made the human upright and breathed into him of this root. And it took, took his form, final form when the revelation came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But where did it come? قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًا لِلِّجِبْرِيلَ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلُهُ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ مُصَدَّقًا لِمَا بَيْنْ يَدَيْهِ وَهُدَى وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Say who is an enemy unto Jibreel for verily he brings it down to your heart. It starts in our hearts, brothers and sisters. It starts in our hearts. It starts in our purifying our hearts and elevating our hearts and elevating our spirit, our soul, so that we grow and transcend those natural impulses that we might have. And it's not easy work. It's difficult work. It's challenging work. But it is the work that has an unrivaled reward, both in this world and the next. And one of its war rewards in this world it creates within us the capacity to avoid the stinginess within ourselves. It creates in us the capacity to transcend that nafs ammara bisu, that aspect of our soul that inclines towards that which is vile and evil. And unfortunately, we live in a day and time where those forces are cultivated within us, where they're brought to, they're encouraged to be brought to the fore. This is what the likes of the individual we mentioned earlier. This is the force that's being cultivated. Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يُقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ And what does Ayn Rand say? Whoever can glorify and satiate and feed that stinginess within their souls. No, we have another plan for society. We have another path for society. We have another vision for society. And if we stand up, brothers and sisters, as a community with one voice, with one heart, with one vision, then we will be, bi idnillah ta'ala, we will be a source of real hope for this society. But first, we have to be a source of hope for ourselves. Our sister Noor, the sister sitting here, when she reached out to Ahmadu, and express the pain that she was feeling at the loss of her young child to cancer. She was only crying out for a little bit of love. When our brother Yusuf stood up at the microphone and passionately described how he was pushed away from the doors of the masjid until he could only find that little storefront Masjid in Oakland, California to take him in. Poor people who didn't have much, but they looked at one who had less than what they had. One who was a wayfarer and opened the doors. He was just crying out for a little love, brothers and sisters. Let's go back to the 60s again. Let's go back to Donny Hathaway and Roberta Flack. Where is the love? You said was mine all mine till the end of time. Was it just a lie? Where is the love? Brothers and sisters, we're tested for our truthfulness. Alif Lam Mim. 
أحسب الناس أن يتركوا وأن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فليعلمن الله الذين صدقوا وليعلمن الكاذبين the people think they'll be left alone merely saying we believe and not be tested when we tested those who have preceded them in order that Allah would show which of them are truthful and which of them are liars. Brothers and sisters, let us be truthful in our profession of love. Let us be truthful in our advocacy of, of charity and sharing. Let us be truthful as Muslims, as people who have inherited this grand and glorious prophetic mission to take it forward into history and to be a source of difference in the lives of our community and those around us. In conclusion, the verse concludes, وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those who are able to transcend those negative forces within them, they will be successful. Brothers and sisters, our success, and it's very important, as the ravages of the state, the corporation, the fascists, the proto-fascists become full-blown fascists, as they become more egregious, more severe, we're going to have to be people who can maintain their dignity in the face of expanding poverty. And to do that, we're going to have to understand our value, our worth, as it's been stated all day, and I'm only summarizing what's been stated before me. It's not based on how much money is in our pockets. It's not based on whether we have all these labels affixed to our apparel, whether we have the right glasses or the right bag or the right lapel pins or cufflinks. It's based on how we stand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother Yusuf was pushed away from the door. Perhaps if the people who had pushed Yusuf away from the door, had reflected on the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would have taken him in and said, brother, you can stay as long as you like. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he said, rubba ash'atha aghbara, ذي تمرين مدفوع إلا من عند الأبواب لو أقسم على الله لا أبره. That perhaps a disheveled, dust-covered individual who only has two ragged garments to cover himself, he's pushed away from the doors of people. If he were to ask anything of Allah, Allah would give it to him. Why? As Imam Nawawi and others say, because of his standing with Allah, Allah would honor him by responding to his request. So brothers and sisters, don't look at your worth based on how people look at you. Don't look at your worth based on what you might have in the bank. Don't look at your worth based on what you might drive and how dilapidated it might be. Don't look at your worth based on whether or not you have all these labels, the right labels, Rolex or this or that or the other. Look at your worth on where you stand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and work day by day by day to improve your standing with Allah ta'ala to the best of your ability and be idhnillah ta'ala, insha'Allah ta'ala, we will be successful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.